Hello everybody, my name is Glenys and I'm a member of Kenton Baptist Church. It's good to have you joining with our service today. Earlier we read from Deuteronomy and Joshua and in the Deuteronomy passage Moses realises uh, recognises that he's now very old and the Lord has told him that he is not the one to lead the Israelites over the River Jordan and claim the promised land. This may have been very hard for him, but he gathers the Israelites together and tells them that his time is now near and they must now cross the Jordan without him and that Joshua is the one to lead them forward. He assures them that the Lord will go before them and deliver them. They need not be afraid. Moses then commissions Joshua in front of them all to show them that Joshua has his blessing and they are now to follow him. Moses had lived to a ripe old age and knew his time was near. And he used his remaining days to say all the things which were in his heart for his beloved people. When I wrote that in my notes, it did remind me of a, a bit of a sad story that my once best friend when in my school days was married to Jeff, and uh, sadly in his early 40s he had a massive heart attack. But being a paramedic, he recognised the signs coming, and he actually went to his van and got the thing and treated himself. And he had a precious three weeks before he had another heart attack and sadly died. But in that three weeks, he put all his... Uh, things together, he left everything just in case he didn't survive it all, he got everything so it would work better for Jill and the children and he gathered his loved ones together at different times and made sure he said to each one exactly what he wanted to say to them. So often we leave things unsaid, don't we? And it was a precious time, Jill said it was a really precious three weeks. And this is what Moses does in his last few days, or it might be weeks. The timing's not very clear between chapter 31 and 34. But if you go at home and read it, he gets the people together, he reminds them of God's law, he's reassured Joshua, and he does all those things that he wanted to do before his death. In chapter 34, we read about that on Mount Nebo. And although he wasn't to go into the promised land, up that mountain the Lord showed him all the land that he was going to give to his people. But now Joshua needs to take over. So we read in Deuteronomy 34 verse 9, And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the Holy Spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him, and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. So it was a very hard act to follow, very big shoes to fill. But sadly, life had to go on. Joshua was grieving and vulnerable, but he was now the chosen new leader, and he needed to be energised and commissioned, not only by Moses, but by God. Moses showed total faith that God would continue to be with his people and would take them into the promised land. They, in their turn, were now listening to Joshua, obeying him and acknowledging him. It's not easy to be a leader. Do pray for the leadership of our churches and also, of course, for the government at this difficult time. It's not easy to make decisions about what we can and we can't do, what is wise and what is unwise, what is right and responsible, or what is wrong and irresponsible. Please pray for wise decisions to be made. For Joshua, this was an awesome responsibility. Now it was God's turn to commission Joshua. A new leader has to be God's appointment, not just the previous leader's good idea. Uh, this church I used to go to in my teacher training year, very large church in Wales, split when their very good minister retired because he wanted them to appoint his son as to being the next leader. But the church in general didn't feel he was the right person. And the previous minister led a huge split in that church because he couldn't let go. It was very sad. 
So it is important that a new appointment is God's choice. In verses 2 to 9 of Joshua chapter 1, God himself gave a message of comfort and instruction. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you. And when I wrote that, I put it in capitals. You, Joshua, it's now your turn. There was still a job to be done. This was now God's appointment of Joshua, not Moses. It was Moses' calling to bring the Israelites out of Egypt, to give them new laws, to lead them through the wilderness. Moses represented God's law. However, the law doesn't save us. In the New Testament, it says in Galatians that the law is God's schoolmaster to bring us to God. How does it do that? Well, it does it by showing us that we can't do it. We cannot totally keep the law without God's help. And that's why we need to be forgiven and we need the sacrifice of Jesus and his shed blood to forgive us. Joshua's name means the Lord saves. His early name, which I didn't realise or had forgotten until I studied this, was Hoshia. We read that in Numbers chapter 13, verse 8, and again in 16. Hoshia means salvation. The Greek form of this name is Jesus, Saviour. So Joshua is a type of Christ. Joshua, the Saviour, was the chosen one to take the Israelites over the Jordan, which in scripture is a symbol of death. Hence the verse in the hymn, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, it says, When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside, death of death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side. Moses couldn't lead the people over the Jordan. So they had to fondly and tearfully remember him, but now had to respect and submit to a new leader, the Saviour, who would be different, but equally called of God. Unless the Lord comes back first, we all need to be ready for our turn to cross the Jordan. COVID-19 has surely made us all aware of our own mortality. So we need to be ready and keep short accounts with God and make sure we are forgiven and covered by the shed blood of Jesus. God reassures Joshua. He assures him that he would be with him every step of the way. He says no one will be able to stand against them, but this success was contingent on obedience of God's law. Moses' contribution wasn't being overruled. It was vital to their success. Verse 5 reassures just as God was Moses, he would be with Joshua. The Lord wouldn't leave him or forsake him. There were reassurances, but now there were commands. Not requests or suggestions or good advice. They were commands. Look at verse 6. Be strong and very courageous. Verse 7 and 9. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey the laws given by Moses do not deviate from them to the right or to the left. Meditate on the law day and night. Now they weren't to pick and choose. Do I? Do you? Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. Wow, this isn't easy. The three times they were commanded to be strong and courageous were accompanied by reasons to help them. I must admit, I'm one of these people, if someone gives me an instruction, I like to know the reason why. And if I know the reason why, I'm much happier at doing it. And if someone just says to me, do this, and I say why, and they won't answer me, I confess I get quite irritated. That's something I have to confess. So I like reasons, and God gives the reasons in these verses. In verse 6, it was because you will lead these people to inherit the land. So that was a promise of victory. In verse 7, it says, so you will be successful. That's good news, isn't it? And verse 9, because God is with you wherever you go. That's why they didn't have to be so frightened, because God was with them. So why shouldn't you be frightened? A lot of people are very fearful in these days. It's because God is with you. 
There have been different levels of fear during this pandemic. We have different personalities, and some people are more prone to fear than others. But we will all have moments of fear. However, we are called to not live in fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. So those of us in leadership need to model this peace to those that we lead and help others when they are fearful. But of course we're not robots, and of course we will all have moments of fear. I have. But if we're living in fear, we need to seek help and ask where this spirit of fear is coming from. Just telling ourselves not to be fearful isn't going to do it. We need the power of the Holy Spirit and really be trusting in God's provision and protection. Does that mean bad things won't happen? No, I'm afraid not. Uh, he is with us as he was with Joseph in the pit and the prison. Bad things happened. He was with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the fiery furnace. He was with Daniel in the lion's den. But we know that even in these bad places, we are not alone. I'm told that do not be frightened or fearful is mentioned 366 times in the Bible. I haven't actually counted, but I'm told that. So we have a verse for every day and even a leap year. I'm not saying it's wrong to be cautious. We should be cautious. I'm not saying it's wrong to obey the rules. We should obey the rules. We are told as Christians we have to respect the power and obey the powers that be. We will all have moments of fear, but with the aid of the Holy Spirit, we do not need to live in constant fear. We can be at peace with God's help, even in the midst of the storm which rages around us. Don't be afraid, Joshua. You can lead these people. I am with you. Don't be afraid, Israelites, because Moses can't lead you anymore. I've raised you up a new leader. Yes, he's different. You will have to adjust to a new style. But just as I was with Moses, so I'm with Joshua. Support him. Follow his lead. And don't be afraid. However, as I've said before, all these promises were conditional on obedience to God's word, his instructions, his laws. They experienced an amazing victory at Jericho, but it was followed by their defeat at Ai, recounted in chapter 7. It was directly caused by disobedience and lies. One man's sin caused the defeat of the whole nature, the whole nation in battle. Each of us has a responsibility to the whole church to live our lives according to God's laws. A pain in your little toe affects every step. One person's hidden sins can affect the whole church. We are called to examine ourselves, especially before we take communion. Being told to be courageous wasn't a glib statement like, what would Jesus do, or false assurance that everything would be easy. They still had to physically fight the battles. They still had to put their armour on. They still needed to plan strategies and make decisions, except where God gave them a specific plan. There would still be nervous moments, but they could go forward because Almighty God was with them, bringing about his purposes. Amen.